This episode is brought to you by Drizzly. Getting ready to celebrate Juneteenth? If so, discover some amazing Black-owned brands to enjoy all weekend long, from premium small batch whiskey to sparkling wine and everything in between. Drizzly has a wide selection of the absolute best Black-owned beer, wine, and spirits in the business. And you can get them delivered right to your door or wherever you're celebrating with Drizzly, the go-to app for alcohol delivery. Can't be with your favorites to raise a glass together in person on June 19th? Well, you can still gift family and friends their favorites to enjoy from wherever they happen to be. All you have to do is download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com and choose the drinks you think they'll love the most. Cheers to a happy Juneteenth. Must be 21 and over and not available in all locations. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. It is always our honor to host Brunch Talk with you all. It's like having one big brunch party, except we dish about Uh your burning dating questions because we know you have so many of Uh those, don't you? A new one every week. It keeps us on our toes, that's for sure. The question for today, we'll get right into it, is, is it a red flag if you're dating someone who texts too much? And for more context, our listener that wrote in said, I've been talking to this guy on Hinge and we have a first date set up. Really excited and it's been a great conversation so far. That being said, he is a little text heavy. Every day he's been sending a good morning text, how are you doing, which in theory is nice, but we haven't met in person yet. Is this a red flag and should I continue to go on this date that we have planned? Let's take caution when we use the term red flag. A red flag is when you've expressed something to this person that you're talking about and they still did not respect your boundaries, did not respect your needs. This does not sound like a red flag yet because you have not expressed anything. This feels like a very much of an internal dialogue. And now it's a public dialogue on brunch talk. (laughs) But have you talked to him about it? This question of too much texting, too little texting. It's so relative and subjective. What he's doing to you, what he's texting you, he probably thinks he's doing the minimum. (laughs) He's like, we really don't text that much. And to you, it's like so much. He's texting all the time. Right. It just feels like an opportunity for alignment and to communicate. Yeah, I think the other piece is that no one knows what rules we're all playing when it comes to dating. Yeah. He might be thinking, like, I need to text this person. This is how you date. This is what I need to do to show I'm interested. And you're like, please stop doing this. It's too much. (laughs) And I feel it's hard because it's like you can't win sometimes, right? For some person, Mm -hmm. you're not texting enough. For another person, it's too much. So ultimately, you need to just talk and realize what is it that's natural for both of you and what is that middle ground. That being said, I don't think you need this conversation right now because you actually haven't met yet. Personally, pending you just don't get any other feelings of discomfort. Check in with your body. Like, is it just, oh, I'm getting these texts and I don't know what to do with it? Or is it that I am tensing up and I feel like this isn't good for some reason? Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to differentiate. Like, am I just feeling like this isn't how it works and I'm questioning it? Or do I actually feel like scared and unsafe? So that's one thing. Right. And if you feel generally okay, and it's just like, oh, this person and are they a weirdo? Is it a red flag? I would say go on the date anyways. Try to keep an open mind. You have not met the person yet. Or if you're unsure, if you're in the middle state, have a phone call. You know, there's a way that you can yeah. get to a middle state and then check in with your body. If you go on the date, I feel like sometimes after we meet in person, these texts that feel weird actually can feel either great or not good because you have context of who the person is. Mm. Where in this early stage, there's still an illusion in a way. <laughs> like, I feel like people aren't really real, especially if you met on a mm-hmm. dating app. But even if you met like in real life at a bar or something, it's like you barely know this person. So I would say go for it and then have a game plan based on how you're feeling after the fact. It's really tricky when you're just messaging back and forth because you're placing judgment 
judgment on their texting style based on what you've experienced in the past, which doesn't offer the right context because you haven't met this person yet. And I remember I used to write people off if they wrote too much yeah. in messaging, if they gave really long answers or used a lot of emojis. It used to annoy the shit out of me and I would stop texting them back. And I was very much into the people who gave me like one word answers or very mysterious with their answers. And now I realize those are the people who just didn't communicate very well. Right. So think about like opening up your parameters and thinking, could I actually see the good in this instead of yeah. going to the this person's being annoying or being needy? You can already like picture how talkative they would be in person, right? It's a different communication style. So could I be open to seeing the good intention in all of this? But putting a face with the words is so important. Yeah. Like you said, to get that context, Julie. You have no context right now. Zero. You have no context. And it's so fucking weird that if you like someone, it's like they can't text enough. Yeah. You know, it's always like exactly. they can always text more. Exactly. But if you don't like someone, even just one text a day is too much. Oh, my gosh. They're so needy. I think you made a really good point that our brains fill in information. There's something wrong because they're doing this. Or this is wonderful. Like we kind of decide which path we're going to take. Yeah. And that might not actually be indicative of the person. It's our own yeah. filling in the blanks based on our experiences or the fantasies we have, whatever it is. Yeah. It's so important that we take some of this texting stuff at face value at the beginning. Again, if you're getting like creeped out or you feel like really uncomfortable, I think that's very different than someone saying like, how are you? And you're just like, Ugh, right. is this necessary? Very different. Right, exactly. Yeah, finding the context and putting a face with that. It's so good to disconnect with the shit that we bring yeah. into the conversation. But let's stop worrying so much about the texting, right? We're missing the big picture here, which is meeting up, finding that in-person connection. There's only so much you can do over text. And I hate seeing people belabor the texting sage of it all. It's like, that's not the important part. Right. So pull your head out of the texting pinhole and start looking at the big picture. You know, what is my end goal here? I'm trying to find an in-person connection. Yeah. I mean, I would hate for someone to miss an opportunity because of this texting feeling. Yeah. It's one thing if you go on the date and you're like, okay, I still don't feel great about this person. At least you know then. At least you know. Yeah. But we have a friend and she is now married to a copywriter. So he used to write in like full <laughs> sentences with periods. And she was like, who the fuck does this? But then it's like, he's a writer. You know? <laughs> That's his job. Exactly. <laughs> so we just don't know enough about people at this stage. I think we need to remember that. And if you're feeling unsure about the date, like I said, have a phone call if you're really unsure. Or, you know, get a drink or a coffee or something that you have an out if you're on the edge. You know, it still could be worth your time to go, but maybe don't commit to like a full dinner where you're stuck there for three hours. Probably shouldn't do that anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Never do that. Just don't do that anyway. Why would you put yourself through that? Well, before we keep going, I'm curious too to hear if you've had the reverse happen where you've thought like, oh, this is like a great connection because of text that didn't pan out. But before we go there, let's take a minute to hear from some of our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Did you know that HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners? Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose from over 100 items to round out your order, from snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box on a delivery day you choose. No more scouring the grocery store for that one ingredient to complete your recipe. HelloFresh takes away all that hassle by delivering fresh pre-portioned ingredients so you have exactly what you need and helps you cut down on food waste. HelloFresh is also my secret to having great dinner parties. It takes all the pre-planning out of the equation so I can spend more time on other things like the playlist and table settings. My friends are guaranteed to enjoy the meals I make and think I'm some sort of incredible chef. So want 16 free meals? Go to hellofresh.com slash datable16 and use the code datable16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Again, go to hellofresh.com slash datable16 and use the code datable16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 
We are so excited to share with you our new podcast, Exit Interview. Dates don't usually end with a satisfaction survey, and yet we rate everything in our lives, from Uber drivers to local coffee shops. So why don't we do the same thing when dating? We're here to conduct the ultimate romance review, featuring daters hungry for love who have agreed to call up old flames to gather honest feedback. Welcome to Exit Interview. He upgraded himself to business class while I was in economy. <laughs> Wait, wow. What? There's feedback that will make you cringe. She could be a little bit hard-headed, like not reading the writing on the wall. And feedback that will make you swoon. But she said that she had feelings for you. I had no idea. Really? <laughs> and maybe you'll learn a thing or two yourself about how you can be a better dater, lover, or partner. Obviously, like, knew I was going to learn something. I didn't expect this. Welcome to Exit Interview. Listen to Exit Interview on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I just remember my old roommate just being like, new to OkCupid, this was years ago, enamored by this guy, like being like, I Mm -hmm. think I found the love of my life. Wow. And I was like, you should meet him first. (laughs) Because like they were just very witty texts and Uh they were just vibing that way. And then she met him, did not translate in person. Curious, have you ever had this where you actually got like good vibes from the text and then it didn't carry over? Absolutely. So many of those early online dating phases, I couldn't even believe that was the person I was meeting because they were so witty over text. And that's the point of this whole conversation is the person behind the texting is not a full representation of who they are in real life. I was also even thinking about this. Some people text on their phone. Some people text from their computer. Yeah. It's like, depending on the medium, it inspires a different way of communicating. If I'm on my computer, I can write novels and I can express myself yeah. much more deeply than on my phone where it's just my thumbs. I just want to give like one word answers. So yes, I've had so many of these mismatches, which helped me learn that I cannot judge a connection based on texting alone. No, I mean, I think about it in general with this whole like, you know, online dating world. I'm very pro dating apps, as you know. I think it's a great way to meet people. Mm -hmm. Clearly, yes, there are downsides. I don't want to pretend like there aren't, but let's be honest that meeting in the wild, there's also downsides. Everywhere, Mm -hmm. there's going to be a downside. Yeah. But I think the most important thing is getting to the date and seeing how they are in person. However you meet, that's the most important. Yeah. When you're meeting through a date, dating app, the profile, in my opinion, is the least important. That should be like the bare minimum. Do I just feel like this person's good enough? And I know that sounds like you're settling, but it's not. You just no. There's no way to know. That's all you have No, is a 2D photo, like in a few lines about the person. There's no way. And also, I don't know about you, but I feel like anytime I see a photo of someone, they never look the same in person. This is even outside (laughs) of dating apps. Like I had a tasker help with moving, looked nothing like the photo, just never. (laughs) So I've just given up. Like as long as I'm attracted enough, as long as I'm like, this person looks good enough, I will talk to you. Then you see through the texting, can you at least carry a conversation? Am I getting any like ick feelings or like, you know, They're sending me dick pics or something terrible, right? That you're like, no. Yeah. Then move on to the date. Like, that's the only way you're ever going to know. If you stay in the profile and texting black hole forever, what are you doing? Like, what's the point of even doing this? What's the point? Yes, they should be very much filtering. I personally think unless you're getting major signs then you don't continue. Right. Or you find ways to investigate further, like doing the extra phone call or whatever it might be. In those initial text messages too, think about you're talking to the representative of someone. Mm -hmm. And when you think about, okay, if this is like a hired representative, their PR rep, Okay, who cares how long the texts are and what they're saying? This is just a representative because everybody has this representative personality when they first start texting someone. That's not their true self yet. Whatever you're putting out there probably isn't super authentic to who you are either. Yeah, just there's no need to judge all of that based on the texting alone. But I get that sometimes it's triggering to look at a ton of texts and being what the fuck is wrong with this person? Do they have nothing else going on in their life? They're just texting me. So if you start having that feeling, I think it's time to look inward and ask, where is this coming from? 
did an ex do this because they were super insecure and super needy and you felt like you always had to report back to them? Is that what it's bringing up? What is this triggering for you and how can you start digging deeper into that for yourself so you can heal from that? Instead of projecting it onto the stranger who has no idea what's going on. And also, like, what are they sending in text? Because I've definitely had a situation. I remember that I was in a meeting at work. This was someone I had just talked to on a dating app. Mm -hmm. We did a plans to meet up. So similar. And he sent me all these texts. And I was like, hey, I was just in a meeting, whatever. And he was like, oh, I don't think we have the same texting style. Oh. And then basically was like, this is why you're still single. I got, like, very aggressive and I'm like, dude, whoa, I didn't respond to your text because it's the middle of the day and I'm in a meeting. I think what is happening from this text is more important than what the actual texts are. Someone sending you a good morning text, all that, then you can even say like, hey, would love to save this story for in person when we meet and try to like, you know, wrap it up if you don't want to be endlessly texting with this person. But if they do get aggressive or say something then that is a sign, in my opinion. So it's more about what's being said than the actual act of texting. Oh, that's such a prime example of someone filling in the blank, right? Yeah. He just had this idea of you without even knowing who you are. And then coming to this judgment that this is why you're single, like this is, <laughs> we have different texting styles. That is his own shit showing up and he hasn't right. resolved it for himself. Let's all try to prevent that from happening. Can we like this? Stop projecting our own shit onto other people. The irony is I do love texting and I probably would have texted you with him all the you time. do. <laughs> but I sometimes know. you're in a meeting and you just can't. <laughs> Wow. You just never know. <laughs> you never know. But I do agree with you. A lot of it is coming from your own insecurities, your own past experiences. I could see someone if they had that experience in the past and they get someone new that's a texter a little too much. You think that's going to happen again. Yeah. But we can't project what's happened in the past to someone new without knowing who they are, without knowing their motives. Like they could be asking you a question out of pure curiosity, or they could be asking you a question out of maliciousness. Yeah. But if you don't know them, you don't know their intentions, you're just filling in the blanks, whatever way, whether that's positive or negative. Right. I would personally rather just be like, I don't know right now. <laughs> that's all I know is I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to keep this in mind. I'm not going to go into maybe the date. Like, I'm like, scoping out a little to see if I get this vibe in person. Not to say that you should go on a date like expecting the worst because that's not a good strategy either. But fair enough if you're a little more reserved than maybe you were before. Yeah. But we can't just like assume with texting, no. especially texting. I really think picking up the phone if you're unsure is such a better strategy than just texting. There's no tone. Yeah, for sure. And it's also good once you meet up is to make these observations out loud and say, I notice that you like texting. Is that your preferred communication style? I mean, it's always up for discussion. And yeah. most people have no idea where they are on the spectrum of texting, messaging. Like, they don't know. And the other question is, like, how much is this their preference versus what they think they should be doing? I found right, right. in my past experience, a lot of these people that are over texters, they're new to online dating. They don't know how it works. Mm. And <laughs> they, they don't know how it works. They're so no, innocent. I feel like that is a thing that people have been like, <laughs> I like, you know, OK, let's just put it this way. If you come out of a long term relationship, you're used to texting that person all the time and being That's true. constantly That's true. in contact. Then you go to someone where you're like, I shouldn't be texting them till we meet. Yeah. Like you have no idea what's happening. <laughs> so That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. We don't know. Basically, the short <laughs> we don't know. is we don't, know. don't read too much into text. Listen to your body, though. End of story. See what they're saying in the text, not just that they're texting. If you are getting major vibes or if you bring it up and say it's too much and then they're like, no, it's not or you're not dateable or whatever. That's the red flag, not that they're just texting. Yes, exactly. Stop using red flags when it's not really red flag. Yes. At least have a convo or at least get to the point where you're like, nope, pretty sure this is a red flag. I can move on. Yeah, pretty sure this is not yeah. right for me. 
Okay, well, good luck out there, everyone texting, using data gaps. You could do it. <laughs> good luck <laughs> in general for all of you right now. But go get your brunch. Go nourish yourself. We're going to do the same. Thank you for that question. You can always send us your questions by emailing us hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast is the handle. But if you want the surest, fastest way to get your question answered is to give us a five-star rating and review and Apple Podcasts. First, leave us five stars. And then in the review portion, in that big text box, you can ask us any question you want. And if you do that, we'll push your question to the top of the queue, which we've done quite a bit now. <laughs> so we make that promise to you. No ifs and buts about it. Okay. Well, we will see you next week. Bye. The Datable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Datable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes in our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay datable. Stay datable.